Amen. Well, good morning. good morning. Good to be in the house of the Lord. The Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm going to be in the book of Ruth uh, this morning. The book of Ruth. Uh, let's look at <clears throat> chapter number one. If you got an old Schofield, page 1322. 1322. Uh, if you have an old Schofield, uh, if you don't have one, then I highly recommend it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. The book of Ruth, chapter number one. Amen. And uh, hope you had a good week. Uh, and we'd like to say thank you for coming and joining us here in the house of the Lord. Uh, let's be much in prayer for all the sick. Pray that God would touch them. We've got many folks that are sick. Uh, and uh pray that the Lord would have his way. And like we said earlier, uh, pray for Brother Raymond. Uh, he had an accident this morning uh, and uh, called when I was uh, getting ready to uh, almost be here at the church. And uh, they were loading him in the ambulance. So uh, you pray for Brother Raymond, broke his ankle, uh, and uh, pray that God would have his way. Uh, amen. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Uh, what did I say? Did I give you the wrong page? The book of Ruth, chapter chapter number one, page 315. I gave you the wrong page, didn't I? 315. Sorry about that. Comes with getting old. <laughs> Amen. 315. <laughs> what did I say? 1315? Yeah, okay. Oh, well, you know, I'm like the weather man. I'm just a little bit off. <laughs> Only a thousand pages. <laughs> 315. Amen. I've got this large print Bible you would think I'd be able to see better. <laughs> you know, uh, but hey, I tell you, uh, you know what they say, when, when your only tool is a hammer, all your problems start looking like nails. Uh <laughs> Uh, so, well, we'll, uh, we'll see, uh, <laughs> 315, uh, and y'all pray for me, uh, I, I went to the eye doctor not long ago, uh, so, but hey, uh, it, it catches up with all of us, you know, <laughs> My, my wife and I went to dinner last night, and we were sitting there waiting on the meal to come. And she said, "I can't believe this." I said, "What?" She said, uh, "We're we're old. We're uh, we're uh, we're at retirement age, uh, you know." And uh, I said, "Yeah, we're we're there, we're there." Uh, and I held up my phone. I got an app on my phone that shows a, a, a countdown thing, and. Uh, Shows the number of days I got left. <laughs> I said, yep, we're there. <laughs> we'll count them down. <laughs> Amen. Uh, <clears throat> all right, the book of Ruth, chapter number one. If you found your place, uh, let's look at verse number one. Uh, now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Malon and Chilon, the Fafathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left, and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpha, and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. And Malon and Chilon died also, both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Let's stop reading right there, and uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, for the blessings you've given us. Thank you for this uh, opportunity that we have to be in your house, Lord. Thank you for preserving your word across the centuries, Lord, that we might have it today. 
uh, and for every time we've ever heard the gospel. We thank you. I pray, Lord, that you might help us now. Uh, Lord, uh, teach our hearts and uh, draw us closer unto thee. Be with all these, Lord, that are here today, and be with those that couldn't be here. Touch the sick. Save those that are lost today. Uh, in Jesus' name, and for his sake we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, what I want to talk about today uh, is something maybe uh, you might have thought about and maybe not. Uh, uh, the, the book of Ruth is uh, only four chapters, uh, 85 verses in length, and, and uh, you know, most uh, uh, scholars say it's uh, uh, closely connected to the book of Judges. And in fact, uh, some ancient scholars uh, uh, said that Ruth actually uh, uh, and Judges can comprise a, a single book. Uh, and, uh, you know, the characters that are in the book of Ruth uh, uh, lived roughly around 1300 B.C., uh, there, thereabouts. Uh, uh, and some 800 years later, or uh, 500 B.C., uh, there's a form of storytelling that came uh, to be popular known uh, as uh, the Greek tragedy that became popular. You're familiar with that. Uh, well, just like the Greek tragedy, uh, uh, in the book of Ruth, there's misery and there's death and there's tears and there's suffering and, and there's sorrow. Uh, and then there's happiness and joy. Uh, and all of these things, uh, you know, kind of move to draw us in uh, to the story, amen, of the book of Ruth. Uh, our attention, uh, you know, here is often drawn to Ruth. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the name of the book is Ruth. Uh, uh, and uh, Ruth was a Moabite, uh, a Gentile. Uh, who put her trust in the Lord and followed Naomi back to uh, Bethlehem, Judah, uh, to that land. The Bible said they came in uh, into the land in the beginning of the harvest. Uh, uh, and so most of the time we focus on Ruth. Uh, but today I, I want to look at somebody else, uh, uh, Naomi. Uh, Naomi, uh, uh, and I want to uh, uh, call her uh, the first prodigal. Amen. We're, we're familiar with the prodigal son in the New Testament, uh, but the Old Testament has a prodigal too. Uh, and, and it's not a man, but it's a woman, and her name is Naomi. Amen. Uh, so let's focus on her. Naomi is the prodigal of the Old Testament. Uh, 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 if you look at the similarities, uh, both of them had a, uh, a history uh, of a Jewish family. Uh, uh, they both uh, began with a sad departure uh, from their home. Uh, they both traveled to a far country and began to be in want. Uh, they both uh, uh, continued uh, uh, with heartache and loss uh, and suffering and misery. Uh, uh, and then finally, the story ends with a homecoming. And so Naomi, I believe you'll agree with me, is the first prodigal, the prodigal of the Old Testament, if you want to call her that. So let's, uh, uh, let's consider uh, uh, the movement involved uh, in her, uh, her departure. They departed uh, from the father's care. In verse number one, the Bible said it was in the time uh, when the judges ruled and there was a famine in the land. Now, you know, uh, it's not saying necessarily that the famine was connected with the judges. Albeit there are times when God punishes uh, uh, a nation because uh, it strays away from God. I, I believe personally that's what's happening to America today. Uh, we have strayed away from the Lord, uh, and God is trying to get our attention. Listen, uh, he, he will get our attention uh, one way or another, amen, one way or another. I, I, uh, I, I was talking to uh, Brother Milton Farmer. You know, he passed away not long ago, but last time I saw him was uh, at church, and uh, he was talking about uh, uh, being uh, someplace at a restaurant eating, uh, and uh, he said he was sitting there eating, and he and another preacher were sitting there, uh, and, and this fellow came up uh, and, and wanted to uh, start a conversation, you know, uh, how y'all doing, uh, uh, and, and he wanted to start talking about uh, 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 tithing, uh, you know, and giving to the Lord, giving to the house of the Lord and all of that. Uh, and, uh, you know, he was giving his reasons why, you know, he wasn't giving uh, uh, to the Lord. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, uh, this other preacher said, uh, uh, you know, he could see Milton uh, was biting his tongue. He was trying to be nice and all that. Uh, but then finally, uh, he had had enough, and, and he said, God will get it. And the fellow said, what do you mean? He said, God will get it one way or another. Uh, he said, if you don't give to the Lord, uh, 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 then the Lord will get it. It may be at the hospital. It may be, uh, uh, you know, the doctor bill or somewhere else. Uh, 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 but, but God will get it. Amen. Uh, and, uh, uh, listen, uh, beloved, when we set ourselves on a path uh, uh, to stray away from the Lord, God is going to deal with us. I, I personally think that's what's happening to uh, America today. And I pray that we get back to God. I do. Amen. I, I believe that's the cure to our problems today. It's not, uh, uh, you know, money being doled out, although, you know, we, we need that. Some folks are, are in dire straits and all of that. But, uh, you know, I, I could give you a whole uh, a uh, list of reasons why that could be a bad thing uh, uh, in the end. Uh, uh, but listen, there are people who are, are hurting today, but some of this, uh, uh, you know, has been orchestrated, in my opinion, uh, and uh, to put us on a certain path. Amen. Listen. It's time for the church to stand up. I heard uh, or read uh, 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 the other day, Billy Graham's son, Franklin Graham, said, you know, uh, it's time for the church to take a stand because we're being pushed further, further, and further back. And I agree. Uh, but listen, we are, the stage is being set. We are getting ready for uh, uh, changes. We've already had uh, changes, and we're getting ready for more changes that will come unless uh, America turns to God. If we turn back to the Lord, uh, uh, brother, we could stay this. The Holy Spirit uh, uh, could move and change this. You say, well, I don't know if God would do that. Well, the Bible said that Hezekiah was a man who was sick unto death. Amen. And uh, uh, the prophet went to him and said, uh, uh, you know, get ready, put your house in order, uh, for thou shalt surely die. And uh, brother, he uh, repented and got down on his knees and called on God and said, Lord, forgive me for what I've done. And before the prophet got across the courtyard, God had spoken to him and said, you go tell him I've heard his prayers and I'm going to add 15 years to his life. God turned that around just that quick. Amen. And uh, listen, my beloved. Uh, I believe uh, 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 the Bible says uh, all nations that forget God shall be turned into hell. And that includes us. Amen. And brother, I tell you, we are fast on a path. Well, I didn't mean to deter, but, uh, you know, uh, take a side path. Or, or some people call it chasing a rabbit, whatever you want to. But you got to say what uh, the Lord gives you. But they departed from the Father's care. And then... Uh, they departed from their place of provision, Bethlehem. Bethlehem, by the way, means the house of bread. Amen, the house of bread. You say, well, there's a famine in the land. Well, yes, there was. Uh, but listen, God is able. They forgot that God was able. You, you say, preacher, you're saying they shouldn't have went. I, I don't think they, uh, they should have. I think what happened, uh, you know, and if uh, uh, if Naomi hadn't have gone, uh, you know, uh, Ruth wouldn't have come back with her. Uh, but listen, God uh, uh, is uh, no shortage of means. God can do anything. Uh, and God could have, uh, you know, made a way for Ruth to made it up uh, uh, to Bethlehem, Judah, another way. Amen. God, uh, uh, God can do anything. Uh, amen. And so, uh, uh, listen, let's not put God in a corner. I know it worked out uh, well, and I'm glad Ruth came, and she ended up being, uh, you know, in the, in the line of Christ and so on. Uh, and uh, what? a blessing that is to realize that. Uh, but that only tells us God can take a, a disaster and turn it into a blessing. Amen. Amen. Um, if you know what it is to be saved and know the Lord, some of us know it to different degrees that God can take our lives and take a disaster and turn it into a blessing. Amen. He can. He can take our lives and turn it into a blessing. Amen. Uh, they departed from the place of praise. The, the, uh, the word Judah is praised. We ought to be 
lifting up praises to the Lord Jesus Christ. They departed into a far country. Now, Moab was not as far as Egypt was, uh, but it was still outside the area of God's blessing. Why? Because Moab uh, had treated uh, uh, Israel poorly when they came out of the land of Egypt. They failed uh, uh, to give them uh, assistance. They failed to give them food and water and the things that they needed, uh, uh, and they were outside of the place of God's blessings. Now, Christians by the way, uh, we can choose to go outside uh, uh, the blessing of the Lord. God will let you go. Amen. And you, you may get yourself into a mess and uh, uh, listen, you may have to call on God, uh, uh, but God may teach you a lesson by doing that. Amen. He may teach you a lesson. Now notice uh, the progression of this movement. They, uh, they're straying. The Bible said they went to sojourn. Uh, the word sojourn means to turn aside uh, from the road for lodging or for any purpose to remain somewhere. Uh, verse 2, look at it. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and his two sons, Malon, Chilon, uh, Fafrathites of Bethlehem, and Judah. They came into the country of Moab and continued there. Amen. They turned aside. They went to sojourn means, uh, you know, we're going temporarily. We're going to there to seek sustenance. We're going to get food. We're going to get uh, what we need, and then, you know, we'll return. But look at what happened. They continued there. And then the next verse said, Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. Amen. He died. The, the Bible says that God chastens those that he loves. Amen. And sometimes, as Christians, God will chasten us, amen, uh, or he will chasten us. And sometimes you can see it in folks' lives. If you've ever been, uh, uh, you know, subject to the chastening of the Lord, as Brother Grover used to say, uh, you, uh, you've never had a whooping until God gives you one, Amen. Uh, God can really get on your case. Uh, there's nowhere you can run from him. There's nowhere you can hide. You know, I remember as a young fella, I got in trouble for doing something. I can't remember even what it was now. But my mom told me, uh, I want you to go get me a switch, you know. And people don't know what that is anymore, you know. Uh, but she said, I want you to go get me a switch. And, and, uh, and don't come back here with one, you know, that uh, is no good. You know what I'm talking about. And so, boy, I tell you what, uh, uh, that was the longest trip I ever made. Uh, one, because I hated to do it, Brother Wesley. And second, uh, because, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it just took a while. Uh, uh, and I was like, man, I'm dreading this uh, uh, because I know what's going to happen. Uh, she's going to use it on me. And I was trying to pick the right one. You know, I wanted one with uh, uh, enough to uh, stand the test mom's eye but I wanted one that wouldn't last too long you know I have uh, you know I didn't I didn't want it to be too green I, I, and I couldn't get it too dry because uh, uh, then uh, you know she'd send me back for another one or go get one herself you know uh, and boy that was a I believe getting the switch was about as painful as uh, as being on the end of it you know and the story, uh, you know, at the end of the uh, the end of the day, uh, uh, you know, it wasn't too bad. I mean, my, my mom never was one to, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, frail on you too much. Uh, uh, I've never really seen her angry much, uh, but but you know, I'd done something that was really uh, uh, bad, and and so she gave me a whack or two, uh, and I'm sure I deserved it. Uh, and there were times that I deserved it that I didn't get one, brother Andrew. Uh, uh, but you know what? They got made up later on, you know. Uh, when I got in school, I had a couple of teachers that, you know, would say, yeah, back then they used the paddle, you know. Y'all ever had the paddle? Amen. Uh, uh, and uh, we, we had one teacher, he had a paddle, and, and he had holes in the paddle. He had drilled holes in it, you know. And you could hear that thing coming. <laughs> you know. And, uh, uh, you know, I remember being in class. I had two friends, and they were, uh, uh, we were all three crazy, but they were a little crazier than I was. 
Uh, and we had Simon in a civics class. They don't even teach civics anymore, I don't think. Uh, and we had a civics class, and we was in uh, the class got there the first thing that morning. Uh, uh, and uh, the guy teaching the class, uh, he, he uh, where he went to college, he used to be a basketball player, I think. He was a big, tall guy, uh, and uh, uh, you know, good fellows, as far as I know. But but anyway, uh, he said, "All right, who's got their lesson turned in?" We had an assignment to work over the weekend. Well, I had done mine, and I got it ready, and I had it laying there on my desk you know and it was ready to turn in he was gonna he said i'm gonna come by and pick up your assignments well my my two friends one sat directly behind me and one sat behind me one seat on the other side uh they had not done theirs and they didn't want me to do mine either and so what well, unbeknownst to me i had turned my head when i'm distracting me Ellen grabbed my assignment and, and opened the window and we were up on the second or third floor of the building and they threw it out the window uh you know and so when he came by collecting assignments, mine was gone. And I told him I had it. It was right here. And he was like, yeah, right. Uh, you know, heard that one before. Uh, well, they were snickering, you know, and laughing and, and all that. They thought that was funny. Uh, and uh, uh, they hadn't done theirs either. Well, he said, you know, he had had enough or whatever. He thought I was telling a lie. Come on out in the hallway. And so, uh, you know, he lifted me up by the seat of my pants with that paddle, uh, you know. And uh, uh, it was not a pleasant experience to particularly particularly since, uh, you know, I hadn't done anything to deserve it. Uh, you know, uh, listen, uh, but I, I've thought about it in, uh, uh, in retrospect. He probably got me for some other things uh, that I'd done before that I hadn't uh, gotten one for, you know, Brother Andrew. <clears throat> so it all bounces out. Listen, God will get you in the end. Amen. Uh, they continued there. They uh, they came there to sojourn, and then they ended up existing there. Uh, to continue there means to exist or to become uh, or to come to pass. Lord, I'm out of time already. Uh, uh, listen, uh, 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 so uh, they they took them uh, of, uh, they dwell there about 10 years. It means they settled down, and then they took wives of the women of Moab. Amen. Now, it was really forbidden for uh, the Jewish people to take wives outside uh, the Jewish population. They weren't supposed to take Moabites. They weren't supposed to take Amalekites. Or they weren't supposed to take any of those other nations because God knew that it would have a corrupting influence on them. Amen. Uh, and would to God that people today uh, would follow, uh, you know, God's advice in the taking of, uh, of uh, spouses. Amen. You know, a lot of times uh, people's marriages are are based more on lust than they are on love, and that's why they don't last. Amen. You know, uh, because uh, you know the lust factor it lasts a while, and then it's like a hot fire, and it burns out, and then there's nothing. Uh, uh, you know, you have nothing to uh, uh, in common. You know, uh, well. You know, uh, my wife and I, we, we have things in common, thank goodness. Uh, you know, we, we kind of like the same TV shows. Uh, you know, we, uh, we, we like the same things to drink, uh, drink a lot of water, or, uh, you know, there's uh, once in a while a ginger ale. Uh, you know, uh, I, I used to like, uh, well, I still like Mountain Dew, but I've got to where I can't drink it anymore. One, it's uh, not good for diabetics, and, and secondly, it's not good for your kidneys, uh, uh, and thirdly, Thirdly, uh, you know, it's got all that caffeine in it. And uh, if I drink them, Brother Andrew, it, it makes my heart start doing funny things, you know. And uh, and so I, I've I got a whole bunch of them in the refrigerator. Anybody need any Mountain Dew? <laughs> I tell you, I, I like those things, but I can't drink them. So I started drinking ginger ale. And, uh, you know, so I'll say to her sometimes, uh, uh, you want some ginger ale? And we pour it out half for her and half for me. And, and we'll uh, sip on some ginger ale, you know. So we kind of like the same thing, uh, uh, you know. Uh, and uh, that's a good thing. You need that in a marriage, amen, for a marriage to work, for a marriage to last, uh, you need it to work. Uh, uh, but listen, Elimelech died. Uh, you say, preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying uh, it could be because uh, he left uh, and God really didn't want him to go. Amen. He wasn't trusting the Lord. He let his family down there. Uh, and he should have been saying, God, uh, you know, what's the plan? I don't show where he prayed. Now, he could have prayed and said, God, what do you want me to do? And God could have said, I want you to go to Moab temporarily. God could have said that. But we don't find that, you know. 
Don't go somewhere unless God tells you to go. Don't switch jobs unless God tells you to switch jobs. Don't buy a car unless God gives you permission to buy a car. Uh, you know, don't, uh, don't do anything without the Lord uh, seeking the face of the Lord. Because if you do, uh, it, it'll only bring you problems. Amen. Only bring you problems. I, I've done that before. Amen. I, I uh, uh, you know, uh, worked for uh, Wachovia for a number of years and then... Uh, got to where, uh, you know, they were making changes and they were going to, uh, you know, uh, roll up the area where I was at. And, and uh, I said, it's time to go. And so I found another uh, slot at a company and, and I went there temporarily uh, for a while. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, that faded out uh, and uh, I was doing contract work. And uh, I was like, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. I told Cindy one day I went and picked her up for lunch. i had been applying for jobs. If any of you ever been through the unemployment process and apply for jobs, uh, uh, oh, it's a pain, you know. And uh, I was applying and applying and nobody's taking, you know, thank you for your resume. Oh, it looks good, but we just don't need you right now or, you know, whatever. Uh, and I said, I just don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, and I came by one day, picked her up uh, at her office. So I said, let's go to lunch. Let's go here to KW. And we sat down and uh, I prayed uh, over the food. And, and as soon as I got done praying, my phone rang. And uh, I said, okay, let me see who this is. Uh, and I answered the phone. And it was a recruiter from Wachovia. And she said, hey, Mr. Arnold, she said, we, uh, we understand you, you're probably uh, doing contract work and you're open for uh, employment right now. And I said, I am. She said, well, uh, you've worked here before. We know all about you, and, and we don't have to worry about all of that. Uh, going through background checks, we don't have to worry about getting you bonded and all that kind of stuff because you're already taken care of. Uh, she said, uh, you know, we'd like to offer you a job. I said, really? Do uh, you want me to come and see you? She said, no, we don't need all that. Uh, uh, she said, Monday, we'd like you to start Monday. Be here, uh, you know, at uh, 8 o'clock or whatever. And I said, I'll be there. And brother, I tell you what, it was like a 10-ton a, a weight went off my shoulders because I said, now we're going to be able to pay the bills, you know. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, you know, that's why uh, I was talking about retirement. I told Cindy, I said, we've got to watch this thing. I don't know if I'm going to be able to retire or not. She said, why? I said, because I don't want to be eating dog food, uh, uh, brother uh, Andrew, you know. I, I want to be I want to be able to, uh, to live, uh, you know. Uh, but listen, God is able. Uh, but in that instance, uh, you know, I followed the Lord direction. It was tough for a while, uh, not knowing where the money was going to come from and if you were going to be able to uh, pay the bills or not. Uh, but uh, at the last moment, when you think nothing's uh, happening, and I had, I don't know how many rejections that week, God sent the word in, and there I go. I'm back on the employment line again. So let's depend on the Lord. Amen. Now, let's look at, uh, you know, the, the, the motivation involved. Uh, uh, they uh, they were deficient in food. The famine, I think, was probably a result of God's chastening because the nation had gotten away from the Lord. So God was chastening them, trying to tell them, uh, lead them in the right direction. Uh, and uh, there was dissatisfaction in the family. You say, well, why do you say that? Well, the Bible said that Elimelech named his sons Malon and Chilon. Amen. Malon means sick. And Chilon means pining. And so both of these uh, boys, uh, something uh, from birth uh, was wrong with them. Uh, uh, there was dissatisfaction in the, in, in the family. They were hopeless. Uh, they had a defeatist attitude. They didn't know if God was going to sustain them or not. Their heart was away from the Lord. They weren't depending on the Lord. Uh, and you'd be surprised how often and how easy it is for us to get in that situation, even when we come to church and even when we sing uh, uh, the songs of the hymn book, uh, if we're not careful, the devil will slip up behind us, uh, brother, and he will uh, get us with that defeatist attitude, and he'll tell you, God doesn't care about you. God is not going to take care of you. God is not going to help you. Uh, uh, and listen, it's all a lie. God loves you, and he loves me, and he'll take care of us uh, if we'll depend upon him. Amen. Amen. He will. He will. Naomi, by the way, means pleasant or sweet. 
amen, pleasant or sweet. And so uh, she would have been a nice lady to talk to. You ever met somebody like that? Somebody who's pleasant or sweet? Uh, you know, I, I pray to the Lord uh, uh, that he helps me. I, I do. I pray and say, God, help me to be pleasant and, and sweet because, uh, you know, my uh, part of my background is Scotland in Ireland and, uh, you know, all of that. Uh, and, uh, you know, I guess the, the, the Scots aren't known for, for being overly pleasant or sweet all the time, you know. Uh, and, and so you have that nature. You, you got that nature. It's in your DNA. You, you can't undo DNA. Uh, you know, uh, but I pray, Lord, help me be sweet. Help me be considerate. Help me be compassionate. Help me be like the Lord uh, was. Amen. Uh, uh, and uh, Elimelech means God is king. He was the light bearer in the family. And so uh, uh, they wondered, but their wondering was willful. They did it on purpose. They did it with intent. They knew what they were doing. Uh, and so uh, Moab uh, uh, means, uh, uh, listen, uh, 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 incest, uh, amen. Uh, it was, uh, you, you remember these children that came out of uh, Lot and his two daughters? That's where they came from. Moab was one of these children. Uh, uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 7, God said of Moab, Thou shalt smite them and show no mercy unto them. Uh, Deuteronomy 23 said, The Moabites shall not enter the congregation, uh, because they met you not with bread and water uh, in the return from Egypt. Uh, and then they hired Balaam to curse Israel. So Moab didn't have a good history, uh, but yet Elimelech, who means God is king, took his wife, Miss Sweet and Pleasant, and his two sons, sick and pining, and they went where? They went to Moab. Amen, they went to Moab. Listen, the devil's gonna tempt you to go to the wrong place. You know, he will. I, I, as I was going to tell you a minute ago, I had a, a, a job offer one time when I was I went back uh, in, in the organization as a contractor and I worked there for uh, a while and um, you know uh, then uh, things began to you know tighten up. You have so many months as a contractor and then they'll you know put you out or whatnot. And I had another offer that came up uh, uh, from another company. It sounded pretty good. And at first I told them, no, I'm not interested. I got a job. Uh, that's exactly what I told the woman. I said, I got a job. Uh, and she said, but yeah, you're a contractor. I said, well, yeah, I am. They're treating me uh, well. And, and I think, uh, you know, over time, they'll roll this to full-time employment. And she said, okay. Uh, and they left me alone for about mm, six months. And then she called me back one day. She said, hey, I want to talk to you about that job again. Uh, she said, here's the salary. Uh, and it was a good salary. And she said, you know, here's the benefits and, and, uh, and uh, we won't put you on as a contractor. We'll give you full-time employment. And I said, hmm, now you got my attention. Uh, and so I went up and I talked to the people and they seemed nice and all that. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, I took the job because it was full-time employment, not contract work, you know. Uh, but after I got there, I began to you know, wonder what was going on because they told me, they said, here's your desk uh, and uh, we'll, we'll get you a phone and we'll get you a computer, we'll get you all of this uh, uh, and whatnot and uh, we'll put you to work and all of that. Uh, uh, and, and over time, uh, you know, the phone never came, the, the computer never came and I was just sitting at a desk all day reading a newspaper or talking to other people. They gave me no assignments. I had nothing to do. Uh, it was the most boring thing I've ever uh, been at, uh, Brother Andrew. Uh, and what uh, happened, I figured out later on uh, uh, that the person who uh, was in that slot before uh, was out on maternity leave. And basically what they were doing was waiting for her to get off maternity leave and come back. Uh, and I was filling a slot for her. And, and long story short is uh, in the end, uh, they said, uh, one day they said, you know what, we, uh, we don't need you anymore. Uh, and I said, okay. Uh, and I said, well, that's good. I'll just, you know, and I went back. But, but my wife told me after the fact, she said, you know, I knew you shouldn't have went there. 
She said, I, I had this feeling you shouldn't have went there. Uh, and I said, well, wouldn't it have been nice if you had shared with me your feeling that I shouldn't have went there before I went there? <laughs> you know, well, I couldn't tell you that because, you know, that would, uh, you know, that would upset you or whatever. Uh, and I'm like, okay, whatever. Uh, but I made a mistake. It was me. Uh, and uh, it was, uh, you know, I, I won't uh, say all of this here, but, uh, you know, it was run by uh, a bunch of people who, uh, shall we say, uh, had a different lifestyle so it wasn't for me anyway but I felt I kind of felt like a limelick you know I'd made a mistake I, and, I, and I ended up calling the lady that I worked for before uh, and uh, I was able to get back in and I've been there uh, you know ever since but but still there's a price to pay why is that because because I left uh, and I've been gone longer than six months they wouldn't restore my history from before so I lost all of my credibility I lost my title I lost uh, you know everything that I had I had to start over again and brother Andrew because I'd been out six months they wouldn't bridge my retirement uh, they wouldn't uh, do any of that so I lost it all lost everything started over again amen what can be expensive to make mistakes amen so there was some decision in Naomi's experience we see look down at verse 13 uh, would you tarry for them till they were grown this was talking to uh, these women. Uh, Would you stay from them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. Amen. So her daughters-in-law were saying, you know, uh, we'll go with you. Uh, and, and uh, you know, we'll stay with you. And, and she said, you know, if I had more sons to give you, would you wait for them till you could marry them? Uh, no, you wouldn't do that. Uh, she said, it grieveth with me much that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Now, the, the Bible said back here in verse uh, number 6, after Elimelech had died and Malon and Chilon had died, she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how the Lord had visited his people and giving them bread. Amen. She heard, boy, you know, something's going on down at the church. They're having revival down there. Amen. They're singing and shouting and people are getting saved and turning their lives over to the Lord. And here I am. I've been sitting at home and wandering around through Walmart on Sunday instead of going to church and doing this and that. Uh, and I've been, uh, you know, dabbling in this thing and dabbing in that thing and I'm not satisfied uh, listen uh, you can never again be satisfied eating at the devil's table once you have uh, uh, feasted from the Lord you can't do it amen so she heard boy they're feasting on the bread of the Lord up in Bethlehem Judah and so she made a plan and gotta go amen gotta go going back home uh, and so she begins to head home. So look at verse uh, uh, 13 again. She says, would you tarry for them till they're grown? Would you stay for them from having husbands? You know, would you put off having a husband? She was uh, prompted by discouragement of age. You know, I'm old now. I don't know what's going to happen. Now, now, if she'd went back without anybody, she would have been totally alone, been totally alone, had no one to care, no one to help her. Uh, and God intended the family uh, to help each other. Amen. Oh, I know we got, you know, uh, assistance and, and all that's good, you know. I'm getting letters now every day in the mail about, you know, uh, do you want to sign up for this Medicare plan? Do you want to sign up for that Medicare plan? You need to get ready. Uh, you know, your date is approaching and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, just I'm, I'm right now I'm just throwing it all in file 13, uh, you know. Uh, but listen, I'll have to deal with it at some point in time this year. Uh, but listen, uh, uh, she felt she was no longer favored. She thought, well, you know, I follow my husband down here and, and uh, we're in this place and, and maybe I'm out of favor 
uh, with the Lord, but they are being blessed, and, and uh, she ultimately decided it's time to go home. Listen, that's the only place for the child of God is to go home. Amen? It's the only place for the child of God. Now, she saw a decision in Ruth. There's a difference about Ruth. Verse 14, let's look at it. They lifted up their voices as their daughters-in-law, Orpha and Ruth, and wept again. And Orpha kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. Amen? Orpha was practical, and she said, you know, I think I hear what you're saying. You're not going to have any more children, and even if you could, I wouldn't wait for that child until he was grown to marry him, so I think I'm going to stay here and take my chances in, in Moab. Uh, and, and, and in that sense, in the human sense, we can't criticize her too much, but she missed the spiritual aspect. It wasn't Naomi's ability to have any more children. It wasn't Naomi's ability to take care of Orpha. Or it wasn't about putting a burden on Orpha to take care of Ruth in her old age. Uh, it, it was about uh, 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 not uh, just her, but it was about her God and her people and the ability of God to supply a man. And what was being offered to her was a chance to get out of Moab uh, permanently and to join uh, the ranks of the Lord. Amen. Can you think what would have happened if Orpha had followed her too? We would probably see her lineage in the Bible somewhere, but she didn't. She didn't follow through. And sometimes it's just that subtle. Sometimes uh, it's just that easy for people to miss the boat. Uh, you know, how many folks have you seen who, you know, you've talked to, and, and I have talked to folks and, and talked to them about the Bible, and they know. God is real. They know there is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They know that salvation is real. They know that they need to be saved, but they have an excuse. You know, maybe I can't live it, or uh, or I'm waiting a little while. Maybe when I get older, and they, they put it off, they have this excuse, and then that day never comes, or something happens. You know, we, we had a neighbor in our development uh, and I believe he knew the Lord because we'd talk about the Lord sometimes. But uh, I would see him. He, uh, he was former military, uh, in the military for a number of years. And something happened. I don't know what happened, but something happened to his eyesight, and he was almost blind. He could see enough to walk. And he'd see him walk, and, and he exercised. He'd get up every morning, still on the military clock. He'd get up and, and uh, work out every morning. And you'd see him walk. Uh, and, uh, you know, sometimes I'd see him, and, and he walked everywhere he went. He couldn't drive. Uh, and when, when I'd see him walking, sometimes he'd be going to Walmart, and I'd say, hey, Scott, you want to ride? And he'd say, yeah, I appreciate it. And I'd take him to Walmart, or, or if I saw him coming up the street, I'd pick him up and bring him home, you know. Sometimes we'd talk, and we'd talk about the Lord and whatnot. Uh, and, and he was about my age, uh, something like that. Uh, and uh, back here, right before Christmas, we heard one night uh, in the development, uh, sirens and all that kind of stuff, and uh, I didn't think too much about it, and then... Uh, uh, all of a sudden, Cindy asked me one day, have you seen Scott lately? I said, no, I hadn't seen him out walking. I, I hadn't seen uh, seen him going anywhere. I don't know if he's sick or whatever. And and uh, we'd go by his house, and everything was closed. The blinds weren't open, and, and the door wasn't open, you know, and, and uh, just strange. And, and then uh, I found out, uh, you know, a week or two ago from my neighbor across the street, he said, you hear about Scott? I said, no. Uh, he said, those ambulances that came right before Christmas, they came for him. Uh, he had a heart attack. And he died, and he's gone. He's gone. Now, I'm sure he wasn't, uh, I think he was ready, but I'm sure he, he wasn't, uh, you know, wanting to get on the next bus, if you know what I mean. So we never know. We never know. Today could be our turn. Amen. Uh, and, and so Naomi said it's time to go home. She came home, the Bible said. Uh, in, uh, let's turn to chapter 2 right quick, and I'm trying to finish here. Chapter 2 and uh, verse uh, number 2, Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me now go to the field and glean ears of uh, uh, corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And he said to her, go uh, my daughter. Amen. And so now she's, uh, she's going to glean uh, from the fields of Boaz. Amen. 
uh, they had no hope before, but now, you know, and, and under Jewish law, uh, if you raised a crop, uh, you were supposed to leave so much of that on the outside perimeters for the poor. So, and not harvest it all, not keep it all. You know, that's why God said to the rich man, he said, your barns are full. And you, you've, uh, he said, I've garnered up everything. My barns are full. I'm going to pull down these barns and build bigger barns so I can bestow all my, all my goods. And God said, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. He hadn't thought about the poor. Amen. Well, they were supposed to leave the perimeter. So the perimeter of the poor could come and they weren't called out and they weren't picked on or they weren't necessarily seen, but they could slip into the field and they could glean uh, uh, and go back where they came from. That's how it worked. And Boaz saw Ruth out there and he said, hey, I got some over here. He told the gleaners to come. He said, I got a special pile for her. I want you to go and and take that to her so she doesn't have to uh, work. Just give her some. Amen. Boy, isn't it good when you, it'll make you feel good to do something for God. Amen. Uh, and, and so Boaz took care of her. Amen. And, and she came, uh, uh, and Naomi advised her, and she came, and she went while they were working in the harvest. And, and while he was asleep, she came and lay down uh, at his feet. Amen. In other words, she was telling him, I, I'd like to stay and and help you and permanent, you know. And there was another nearer, nearer kinsman redeemer than Boaz. Uh, and, and so Boaz had to give first right to him. But, but uh, that man gave it up. And Boaz said, I'll take it over. Amen. I'll take it over. So she came home in the beginning of the harvest. God restored her provision. Uh, in chapter 2 and verse 16, uh, and let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her and leave them that she may glean them and rebuke her not. Amen. Just throw some handfuls on purpose down on the ground. Amen. Boy, isn't God good when you find handfuls on purpose. You've come home from Moab. You've been sojourning in the land. You kind of got stuck there. You stayed too long. And now you've heard... Uh, you know the good things of God. You know the good things of God. You tasted the good things of God. Uh, and you made it back home and you're thinking maybe I'm not worthy and God doesn't want me back. And guess what? You find he's leaving handfuls on purpose. Amen. God is good, isn't he? Amen. So God restored, and I'll give you these right quick. He, her, her provision, her position, her prominence, her productivity, her praise, her prospects, all of that God restored. And Ruth now is included in the line of David, you know, uh, and ultimately the Lord Jesus Christ. So truly, you know, the Greeks uh, uh, would love this, a Greek tragedy, death and suffering and misery and dying and then happiness. Amen. Happiness. God can only do those things. Let's stand at our feet. Hope you got something out of the message today. The first prodigal. Naomi. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh, thank you for those that were coming by way of the front row. God bless you. Uh, God bless you for coming. We saved you a seat. Thank God for you being here. Come be with us at the next time and uh, the Lord bless you uh, until we meet again. Uh, Brother Wesley, would you dismiss us please, sir?